is on pit road. And with the call to start of tonight's race from Altamont, Illinois, Kurt Becker. Lap 35 will mark the conclusion of stage one. It is a 150 lap advertised distance, 225 miles for these Gander Outdoors trucks. Green flag is in the air. On the break, Grant Enfinger leads the field back to turn one. Shelby Cream will stay down on the inside. He'll get a push from Todd Gilliland. They'll work their way down in front. It is Sheldon Creed. They're three wide further back with Harrison Burke looking the outside of Crafton. They're three wide back there. Matt Crafton's right in the middle of the center of it. But back for the second spot, Ross Chastain pulls out a line, trying to go for the second spot to the inside of Grant Enfinger. He'll try to get on him right there. Won't clear Enfinger off the corner. Gustine a bit out of shape mid-pack as off of turn number four they come to complete lap number one. And it's Sheldon Creed that will be the race leader over Grant Enfinger as they race back to one. Right now, the guy above the cut line, Ben Rhodes, is running in the 15th spot, so he's obviously not going to get any stage points for this first stage. Sheldon Creed wins stage one here at Kentucky. On car insurance. Green flag from the starter stand, and we are back underway to begin stage number two. Grant Infinger electing to restart in the outside lane, leads him back to one. Sheldon Creed spun the tires. He falls back a little bit, but up front it is Grant Infinger. He'll quickly get down the bottom part of the racetrack. Side by side from second on back. Sheldon Creed down to the inside, working their way down the back stretch. It is a huge mess. They are now four wide down to turn number three. Here comes Austin Wayne Self. He'll actually back out of it now, back to two wide. Uh, Self has a done. He's back for three wide more on four. Further ahead, here's Sheldon Creed. He's working his way down to the inside lane of the racetrack. Brandon Jones has the high side. And here comes Brett Moffitt giving a shove to Jones. He gives uh, Moffitt, uh, Moff Moffitt gives him the shove, heading back into turn number one. Jones gets the advantage in that second spot. Moffitt slides up. Trouble back in the corner. Two trucks hit the outside wall coming into turn number one. They slide down to the bottom part of the racetrack. Spencer Boyd is in there. Also in there, it is Natalie Decker as well. We'll see what happens here. He's in the middle of the screen. The orange truck, he's going to dip below Decker in the 54, bounces up. Just wasn't quite clear nope. of Natalie, and she was holding her line, and they clipped uh, it clipped Boyd into that outside wall. Yeah, can't really put any blame on Natalie there. She, as you mentioned, Michael, just holding her line, and he he thought he had enough room to get in front of her as he made tried to make that pass down in the apron. And that all happened right in front of Jordan Anderson, and Anderson just had nowhere to go. It's Johnny Sauter in that oh. 13 truck, and around goes the 42 of Finley. And no contact there. Just uh, just got out from under him. We talked about aerodynamics. This truck's just simply in a bad spot. He got loose getting to the corner. He really didn't have anyone tucked up underneath the rear. Just just a little bit loose here, full of fuel, relatively full of fuel. It hadn't been that long since they were on pit road. You see, Johnny's got you know a good bit of distance between he and Chad, and just one of those things. That truck's just a little bit too loose. Probably would have built up some air in the right front tire in a couple more laps, and this might not have happened. Four, the pace truck goes to pit road. The green flag is in the air. 11 laps to go here in stage two of the buckle up in your truck 225 the lead battle to turn one they're four wide behind the lead battle ross chastain goes down to the inside up front brandon jones jones will go front trouble back it's harrison burton he gets spun around gustine gets involved johnny Sauter is in one of the truck slides back behind him as well making contact and Josh Palicki is that other truck involved as they come to rest in the bottom part of turn number two. On the lead lap, and in fact, he's getting ready to restart in the ninth position last year's winner. At the front of the field, Brandon Jones, the race leader. Green flag is in the air. We're back underway. They go to turn one. Great restart for Brandon Jones. Not a great look for Grant Enfinger. Tries to come back up through the gearbox. Has his team out in the outside. Matt Crafton, they're side by side for second. Here comes Ross Chastain down on the inside of Dylan Lupton. There goes Enfinger. He'll slide up right in front of Matt Crafton. Back to the fourth spot. It's Lupton and Chastain. A two horse race. But at the front of the pack, here comes Enfinger to the inside of Brandon Jones. They make some contact on four. They slam to the outside wall. Fires come across that machine. Enfinger will slam into the grass. Brandon Jones goes aflame off of turn number four. The right side of that truck completely engulfed in flames after he came together. He was to the outside of Grant Enfinger. Enfinger. Dive bomb move into turn number three for the race lead. They came together and four is locked in. Grant Enfinger is pretty comfortable. Well, that comfortable lead on the, on the rest of the playoff contenders is not is going to go away because he got nine points in that first stage and he's not going to get very many more points tonight, though. So he's going to a huge big chunk of that margin he has right now is going away. You see Brandon Jones. 
you see right there, Phil, he just got loose down on the bottom. But they, th that actually, I think Enfinger got loose even before that, entering the corner, and they, they bumped, and, and then it just right here. He's down out of that traction compound. Brandon Jones is in the traction compound. As you mentioned, Michael, he just got loose, and he needed more room, and unfortunately, the 51 truck was there. Had Brandon Jones not been there, he would have been fine. He could have used that whole racetrack. To our view, here, that's Jennifer Jo Cobb, not under power and really slow here in turns one and two. Could this be the caution? We'll have to wait and see with a couple of goes. Race stays under green, two laps to go. Matt Crafton is on the pit lane. Could he be out of fuel? We'll check with him in a moment. As now Moffitt, it appears like he is slow now on the back straightaway, Ford Martin. He's the race leader. Moffitt's out of gas. Here comes Ankrum to the outside. He'll clear him. Now Tyler Ankrum will take the lead now off of four. Here's Tyler Ankrum now off the corner number four looking for the white flag, and there it is. One lap to go for the 18-year-old driver in turn one. Setting his sights on his first career win. He works his way around one lap truck. He has open real estate in front of him. For the final time off turn two is Tyler Ankrum. What a huge turn of events and what a story for Tyler Ankrum in this season. Lost a couple of rides we had this season with the 17 machine, but here he comes on four for his first career win. In just his 12th start here in the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series, Tyler Ankrum comes off of turn number four and will take the checkered play. Flag. He'll win the Buckle Up Indoor Truck 225 here tonight at Kentucky Speedway. And from the newest NASCAR winner as we go to the pit lane. Jumping up and down, celebrating high fives all over the place as Kevin Bono Mannion celebrates with this team. They have really worked this magic. The other two guys, Moffitt and Crafton, apparently tried to go a little too quickly on those pit stops, guys, and didn't quite make it to the end of the race. They wanted to try and keep that track position. It cost him. It came back to bite him right now. Kevin Bono Mannion celebrating. High fives, hugs, all sorts of celebration going on. Bono Mannion, how do you describe how do you describe your driver? This young man right here. How do you describe this young man? You know, he uh, he's amazing, young, talented kid. I first I first come to work for DGR Crosley a couple of years ago. I seen him and I'm like, who's that kid? Oh, that's kind of looked. Uh, I won't tell you what he looked like, but I watched him in New Smyrna in the K&N the car the first time, and I said, unbelievable, you know. And you know, he's uh, he had to get in, a, in, in one, a truck earlier this year for a couple of races because we we felt strong we'd win a race and have some funding to make it to the end of the, the year run for the championship. So thanks to the Real Blazer for coming on board. Uh, Toyota, with the support they give us, this was a brand new truck that the Bab Shop built. Um, just went to the wind tunnel with it Tuesday night. Uh, worked till 11 o'clock, pushing on the truck. He, he drove straight here with the truck. And you know, one of those Cinderella stories, but for this team, uh, Bola Mass, this is here today. This is a big Crosley co uh, country out here, being from Louisville. Slugger from TRD. I know I'm rambling, but so many people to thank for this. But um, like I said, Bo and David have put together a great, a great little truck team. K&N, late model, Arca, you name it, we'll race it. So um, going to the. Uh, hey, go celebrate. <laughs> Kevin Bono Man gets the win. Tyler Ankrum. He wasn't old enough to run the big tracks at the beginning of the season. Did not compete in the first three races of the campaign. But because of that age restriction, he will be playoff eligible and he will be in the playoffs with this win here tonight. Talk about turning the playoff situation upside down. <laughs> Did we try to sell that Eldora could be a real wild card in this playoff? <laughs> How about Kentucky a wild card? You got that right. What a, what a feeling that has to be for that young man. He's won one of the big three series of NASCAR now. You never know. Live sports, unbelievable. How about that celebration? <laughs> do you have to do that? <laughs> Tyler Ankrum, the winner at Kentucky. Tyler Ankrum still getting the congratulations. Here he comes. Tyler Ankrum, your race winner. Tyler Ankrum, there was a time in this race where you were leading, clearly had the best truck. You come out in second, a large gap in front of you. What are they telling you on the radio about the leader, Brett Moffitt? Man, honestly, I don't, I was, 
I was even really listening. I was just, I was just trying my rear end off. Holy cow! Yeah, I think I held my breath through the last last 30 laps there. You're exhausted. I'm tired. I think I honestly forgot to breathe. Holy cow! That was awesome. I, you know, I just can't thank my guys at DJR Carls enough. You know, this win was for D2. He was my tire guy last year in the Canadian Championship. He's currently on his way to Boston now to hopefully get healthier and. Gotta think the guys at Ray Rail Blazer Academy, Toyota. Man, I'm just, I just don't know. What, <laughs> I just don't know what to say. You came into the season with championship aspirations. There were some sponsorship issues that took that scenario potentially away. You're locked in the playoff now. What does that mean to you? Uh, hopefully, that means a sponsor. Holy cow! I cannot believe, I cannot believe I just did this. So, a big hug for mom. Tears of joy for their young son. Family tears. More hugs, but just tell them, I mean, you could chase the championship now. Man, I just don't, it's gonna take a lot more work, that's for sure. I just don't, I can't believe, I, this dream come true. I can't, I didn't, honestly, you know, one of my biggest faults is I've always doubted myself, and tonight, I kind of always, I kind of felt all that wash away, so I, uh, I just can't thank David Gillen, and Bola Masses, DJ Cross, I just, I, I don't know what else to say. Enjoy it. Doubts no more, guys. Tyler Ankrum is a Truck Series winner.